Welcome to C Block. I can't believe I thought it would be fun to turn this pile of salt water into a rocket using a process to produce iron plate that looks like this. First we electrolyze, then we crush, then we liquefy, then we crystallize, then we crush again, and finally we smelt. Oh yeah, and we don't start with inserters. At this point, we're about six hours into the playthrough and we can just have a quick review of where we've gotten to. We have a basic metal smelting setup to produce red science. We have a mud washing plant to produce landfill. And then we move into the charcoal production for wooden boards and the tile level power setup that we can expand throughout this area. Let's move over and discuss our metal expansion now. So we're planning to have our electrolyzers along here, expanding to the right. Further north, we'll have our crystallizers, expanding north for each metal type. We'll move across to sorting for each of the four metal types. And then finally, on the end, we'll come to the casting section for each of the metals that we're interested in. So we're a few more hours into the playthrough. We've added more electrolyzers. We have crystallized bobmonium and rubite, and we've expanded our power to keep up with this increased metal production. With bobmonium and rubite hooked up, it's time to set up lead, tin, solder, and glass. We then route all the metals we currently have onto the start of our main bus. We then use those materials to hook up our first fully automated science. This isn't built to ratio, but it's mostly direct feed into a single red and a single green science assembler, followed by some labs. Power continues to be a problem, so we upgraded to charcoal pellets from the native charcoal and added some extra boilers and steam engines. This isn't exactly to ratio, but if we disconnect the power every so often, we've tended to keep up. In preparation for an upgraded circuit factory, we set up a dedicated set of greenhouses to produce trees and wooden boards. Mud is one of the key ingredients to tree production, and for that we need washing plants. So in order to prepare for more advanced buildings, we use the same washing plants to produce clay bricks. With wooden boards on the bus, we can build basic circuits and electronic circuits using the small 2x2 assembler machines and direct insertion. Notice how the build can be tiled to the right in both cases as we need to expand production. With circuits on the bus and the metals from earlier, it's time to build a mall and speed up our production. We're going for a circuit-based warehouse design where we'll have up to 50 of each element in the warehouse and chain it down the line to produce our supplies. With the mall set up, it's time to expand our resource generation, but first, power. We're going for beans. So we have beanafran to beans, beans to nutrient pulp, nutrient pulp to fuel oil, and then fuel oil into boilers. 5.4 megawatts total, minus the cost of running the buildings. With power secured, it's time for more slag. We're going to use the advanced recipe, so we have cleaning at the bottom, 20 electrolyzers in a line. You'll note that this is going to tile horizontally. We then have purified water production, coming into sulfuric acid production, then we produce mineral sludge. And finally, at the top, we have slag slurry with charcoal filters. The initial bean experiment worked so well, I decided to expand it. I should be able to fit 10 of these units for each set of initial washing plants. With the basics in place, it's time to expand our production. Each of the metals follows the same basic layout. We have a series of crystallizers, followed by some crushers. We have some mineral catalyst, interdirected sorting, we then use ore processing, blast furnaces, induction furnaces, and casting machines. We have iron at the top, we have copper. We produce manganese here in order to double our steel production. Then we come down to steel with the manganese as an input. We're onto tin, lead, solder, and brass. Basic ore secured, it's time to move on to flotation. So we set up 60 crystallizers for each of the basic ores. We then crush the ores, we filter and sort the ores, 
And then we come to this contraption over here, which allows us to separate out each of the individual metal ores for future processing. The first of the new metals we produce are invar and brass for their use in military science. To avoid blockages, we also feed the iron, copper, tin and lead into the various production facilities that already exist using priority input inserters. Before moving on to blue science, we finally build red, green and grey science in a large enough capacity to sensibly drive some labs. Time to start the journey to blue science. First of all, aluminium and silver. We start with sodium hydroxide in the electrolyzers, then we produce aluminium hydroxide. We feed that into a blast furnace to produce alumina. Then we feed it into another blast furnace for aluminium ingots, and then we send it into the casting machines. Silver by comparison is much more straightforward. Ore to ingots, ingots to molten silver, molten silver to silver plates. Next is silicon and glass. For silicon, we first produce ingots, then we melt the ingots, and we generate a silicon seed before generating silicon plates. For glass, we first of all crush the silicon, then we convert it to glass mixture, we melt the glass mixture, and then we cast glass plates. Well, it had to happen. We had to get started on petrochem eventually. So we jumped in head first. 60 algae farms producing blue algae. Then we convert it to multi-phase oil, into crude oil, onto propene, into liquid plastic, and finally into plastic bars. And I don't know what to do with all the leftovers, so we've got some raw gas, some fuel oil, and some base mineral oil. But it feels worth storing, at least in the short term. With the metals rooted onto the bus, it's time to set up red circuit production. First of all, we build the substrate, then the electric components, then the transistors, then the circuit boards, and finally the circuits, along with the intervening amounts of wire and silicon wafers. To support the circuit build, we have to significantly improve the production of wooden boards and phenolic boards. So we set up this forest of trees in order to facilitate that. As an additional build in the same area, we also add in concrete bricks and redo the clay brick production to prepare ourselves for blue tier buildings. After what seems like forever, we have finally made it to blue science. I'm not sure what comes next, but I know there's a lot of new buildings and a lot of new recipes we can unlock. So join us on the next video to see how we progress. As a final part of this video, this is how our current base looks like.